Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Principles of Management, Chapter 11, Lecture Part 2. Wasn't really looking at the timer. Uh, time just moves by so fast when you're having fun. Uh, we were right on this one where it says, if everything is okay when you're in Brazil, avoid making this hand signal is equivalent of someone giving you the middle finger, right? So if you're in Brazil, don't do that one. Uh, do you pride yourself on punctuality? You may be wasting your time in Latin America or uh, countries where the locals tend to be about 20 minutes behind schedule. And if you're there and you're doing business, then uh, they'll look at you in a different way if you seem to be upset that they are 20 minutes behind schedule. Do not clean your plate in China. Leaving food on the plate indicates that the host was so generous that the meal could not be finished, right? You have to know these things before you go to someone's house, conduct business in these countries. Do not eat with your left hand in India or Malaysia. That hand is associated with unclean activities uh, reserved for the bathroom. Well, that's a very PC way to put it. Uh, and in Japan, direct eye contact is viewed as uh, impolite. That's why you see a lot of that in Japan. So just need to know. So if any of you guys are going to do business in any of those countries, just remember those few things. So more great discussion questions. When you see a memo or email full of typos, poor grammar, or incomplete sentence, how do you react? I look at it. I frown upon it. I'm like, yeah. That's why I read my emails over and over again. It doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes in my emails, but I do proofread them. And uh, I kind of look at it funny when someone else doesn't. So uh, does it affect your perception of the sender? For me, yes, it definitely does. Uh, but I want you guys to ask yourself these questions and ask why or why not. Uh, information richness. So this is the information channel over here, and this is the information richness. So if it's a face-to-face -face conversation, if we're talking face-to-face, -face, then the information richness is high. Um, video conferencing, it's also high. Well, I'm making a video here. We're not video conferencing or Skype, uh, so it's not exactly the same right now. Uh, telephone conversation, it is also high. Uh, but when you get to emails, handheld devices, blogs, and uh, written letters and memos, it's medium. All right, and it's very low in formal written documents and spreadsheets. There's no emotion, there's no love in the spreadsheets, right? Uh, it's uh, very low in information richness. Uh, so, verbal or written communication? I do a lot of both. Uh, verbal communications are a better way to convey feelings, right? I want to see you face to face, I want to look you in your eye and convey my feelings. Uh, written communication uh, do a better job of conveying facts. These are the facts, this is what happened, uh, Judge Wapner or Judge Judy, only the facts, just the facts. Uh, so verbal or written communication, so this is a good guide. It says use written communication when conveying facts, the message needs to become part of a permanent file, there's little uh, time urgency, uh, you do not need immediate feedback and the ideas are complicated. Use verbal communication when conveying emotion and feelings. The message does not need to be permanent. There is time urgency. You need immediate feedback and the ideas are simple or can be made simple with explanations. Email and emotions. Uh, emotionally laden messages uh, require more thought in the choice of channel and how they are uh, communicated. So if it's a lot of emotion in there, you have to think about that. Do I really want to send an email or do I want to talk to someone face to face about this, right? Definitely want to send an email saying, hey, you're fired. Uh, email communication can convey facts quickly, yet it is rec uh, not recommended choice for sending emotional information, right? Got to get everybody into a room, uh, speak with them face to face. These are communication flows. Uh, this is you in this little communication bubble. You communicate upward to your supervisor because you report up to them. You communicate laterally to your coworker because you guys are in the same position. You communicate diagonally to a different department, right? Now it could be diagonally uh, upward, right, to a manager. It could be diagonally kind of downward to someone who's below you, uh, but always speak with respect. Uh, and then you can communicate downward to a subordinate, your manager, supervisor, team leader, something like that. Then you communicate downward to someone who reports to you. And Communicating downward is not the same as speaking down to someone, just FYI. Uh, communication flows. Frequent communication is related to uh, better job performance, ratings, uh, and organizational performance. Uh, and this is who managers communicate with at work. And let's see, let me see if this holds true. Subordinates, 46%. Uh, superiors 14%, internal others 17%, external others 23%. I'd say for me, probably a little bit less of the external others just because of my current position. Uh, before my current position, it probably been of more of external others because I had a lot more escalated calls because I ran a call unit. 
So these are forms of uh, external communication. You have press releases, advertisements, web pages, uh, customer communications, anything that's facing outward to individuals. Those are forms of external communication. If it's internal communication, it's to the people who you work with, uh, internal uh, employees, whether it's your subordinates, people on your team, colleagues, managers, vice presidents, presidents, things of that nature. So this is for external Remember, outside, external communication, press releases, advertisements, web pages, customer communication, going to someone outside of your organization. Uh, more great discussion questions. How could you use your knowledge of communication richness uh, to be more effective in your own communication? So, uh, like I said before, as we look through these, we should all learn and see how we can apply this to our current work situation and our future work situations as well. It's uh, never too late to change. Uh, I definitely know that. Uh, try and change a few things uh, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, uh, because I know we are all a project uh, in work always under construction. Uh, these are nine ways to improve your listening habits. So this is great. So I know a lot of, uh, especially probably the women in the class, say, oh, I'm going to give this to my husband or boyfriend, right? Because uh, they say uh, a lot of times that we don't listen. Uh, but these are nine ways to improve your listening habits. Uh, prepare and uh, be receptive. Don't anticipate. You always, if you're talking with someone, sometimes they're anticipating to, I, I want to solve it. I want to resolve it. And sometimes people just want you to listen. Uh, summarize what you've heard. Uh, focus and don't multitask. I had a big problem with this until, uh, and I still have to fight myself on it, until I went to this meeting. And at the meeting they said, you have to give that person your full and undivided attention or you devalue uh, the amount of time that you're spending with them. And the guy went on to explain it to me and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there and I would do this. I would be typing and someone would come up and I'm like, hey, how's it going? What you got, what you need, still typing. What I'm doing is more important than what you're saying. Now, it's quite possible that what I'm doing is more important than what they're asking. That's quite possible. That's not up for us to judge, especially you as a manager. That's not for you to judge. But you need to stop what you're doing, turn around, look them in the eyes, and figure out exactly what they want. Uh, this is, you know, it, it's definitely uh, changed the way that, that I do things when the guy had this conversation with me. Uh, it was a good seminar that I went to. Uh, empathize with uh, the sender's point of view, right? You don't know, just say, ah, oh, you yeah, could get over it, right? Buck up and go get over it. That's what I tell my kids uh, uh, all the time. But, uh, you know, you definitely can't tell somebody that at work. You have to empathize with them and uh, understand their point of view. Uh, seek clarification uh, by asking questions. So you ask questions. It helps to let them know that you're listening and that you're engaged in what they're uh, th what they're saying. Establish eye contact. Right, you're not looking around like, oh, check that out. Right, you want to look them in the face and establish eye contact. Uh, with an open mind, focus on the goal. Right, you want to focus on an established and agreed upon goal. Uh, and pay attention to what is not said, what's being left out. Uh, that could be vital information to to you and also to them. Manage your communication wisely. Uh, do you properly use online communications? That's a good question. Uh, is your outgoing voicemail greeting professional, right? Or do you have uh, something crazy on your, um, uh, and it could even be at home, right? Uh, you know, I remember when I was in college, and don't laugh, well, you probably will. Uh, you know, it, it was popular at that time, way back in the day, to put, you know, a song uh, on, on the background of your of your answer machine where you say oh this is so and so right and i had shabba ranks so if you're too young to know who shabba ranks is then uh don't don't you know don't look it up uh but uh but it's you know just a, a fu funny song and uh you know but it was definitely not one that i should have had on my answering machine uh and if you have a, a cell phone and you get professional calls on it, then you definitely should not have any music in the background. It should be something very professional. And at work, 1,000%, you should not have any music. It should be very professional uh, for your outgoing voicemail. Uh, scrutinize your social networking uh, website. Uh, you know, I will tell you guys got to watch out, especially if you're applying for a job. People are looking at your Facebook. People are looking at anything that you have. I, I showed my daughter this article the other day that the guy, he's a head coach uh, for Arkansas football, and he said that he uh, is eliminating people who he recruits because of their Twitter handle, 
uh, their, their name on the Twitter handle, the people they're associated with, things like that. People are looking, they say, we can tell what kind of problems we're going to run into down the line when we look at this person's social website. Now, I know, you know, some of you guys say, oh, it's an invasion of privacy, but you know what? That's the, that's the world that we live in. If you, if you have to go as far as making a professional one, I've seen people go into interviews and people turn the computers around to them and say, please log into your Facebook, right? Catch them off guard. And then, uh, then they, they look at it. And if they don't see what they like, then they're not going to hire you. Uh, have you Googled yourself lately? All right, you know, you should should try and attempt to see what, what's out there. Uh, be aware of, of remarks that freeze communication, right? Don't criticize, blame, order, judge, or shame. And and that's not just in regards to communication. You know what? We should look at this every single day. You have to, I know it's hard to catch yourself talking about other people, uh, sort of making fun of them, poking jabs at them. But you know what? Uh, it's wasted effort, and then other people do it, and they take it above and beyond. So, you know, certain certain things we should just try and, try and keep in check, especially in the workplace. Uh, make a conscious effort to reduce comments that stop effective communication. So if it's not bringing value to effective communication and towards the goal that you're looking to complete, then don't do it. And finally, last discussion question is how can you assess if uh, you are engaging in uh, active listening and uh, how does it feel when someone uh, does not seem to be listening to you, right? Kind of may feel offensive. Uh, you know, so great discussion questions that they have here. Uh, so uh, another, I wouldn't say pretty long, 41 slides, uh, Principles of Management, Chapter 11. Uh, like I said, I believe there are only 15 uh, chapters in this book, so you have four more to go. And then uh, you can get, get me out of your face for the summer. As always, have a good day and a great week.